I think most of us look at the NFL draft and say, hey, there's seven rounds, and assuming an average year, your team has one pick in each round, right? And out of those seven picks, if you come away with one stud, maybe two other solid starters, and a role player or two that contributes for a few years, you've had a great draft class, right? You probably would say that. I say that to say, you know, good drafts can be in the eye of the beholder, what have you, but no matter what, not everybody you're going to draft is going to be a starter or a massive difference maker. You know, you draft for depth. You draft for, you know, options. You draft for versatility. You draft for upside. You draft for guys that could plug in holes. They could fill spots. They can provide something for you offensively, defensively. You know, they fill a role. And that's okay. Like, you have a list of guys that have filled a role and had a clearly defined but limited role and made themselves a good living and played a long time in the NFL, right? You know, they were never going to be superstars, but they were guys that they had a role and they did it well and hung around for a long time. And most of us only wish that we could have lived that type of life that they were able to lead. You know, and when I look at this year's draft, you know, again, with the running back class, you can find starters, you can find stars day two, day three. But the reality is, if you can find a really solid contributor, you know, a role player, that's not all that bad. And I look at Muhammad Ibrahim and I say, at the very worst, you've got a guy where you can have a clearly defined vision of a role for him at worst and feel confident that, barring injury, he'd be able to produce for a number of years in that kind of narrow scope, deep dive, clearly defined role. Because um, you love, I think you, when you watch Ibrahim, you've got to love the way he runs with violence and power. He can break and blow through tackles. He runs like he's freaking 240, 245, 250 pounds. And he's not nearly that big. He's more maybe like 210-ish, right? Like this is a dude at most. This is a dude that runs with angry ferocity. And also when you look at that physical kind of between the tackles running style, he's got enough long speed to be an adequate long run threat. You know, maybe at times a home run threat. Now, is he a real burner? No. But he's got enough quickness and speed to where especially in a straight line, you could say, hey, if he hits the hole, like he can hit you for some big runs, and he certainly can. When you talk about, you know, envisioning somebody and what they could do at the NFL and you feel like they'd be confident that they would do a good job at it, in Minnesota, he was a great goal line runner. He's got a low center of gravity, that powerful running style, you know, in those close, confined, crowded quarters can really lead to delivering some damage in the goal line in red zone situations. Um, that you could see something that would really be able to translate to the NFL level. He also runs with patience. He really does a good job of allowing his blocking to develop. And then when he allows that blocking to develop, he also has the vision to be able to see and anticipate those running lanes. And when he does, like it's a package, right? He's patient. He's got good vision. And when he waits for the hole and then he sees it, he can react to it really, really quickly. That's a really nice combination to have in a guy like him. He's also shown willingness in, as a pass protector. He's got a feel for his proper blocking assignment. Um, also for a power guy, he's got a nice little spin move that when he breaks it out, can shake some defenders and like change the flow of the run in an impressive kind of way. Like I watched him and I had some fun watching him. It was, it was a joy to do so. Now, I worry about like just how much you can project him to the next level in terms of just how big his role can be because I, I think there are some limits here. I talked about his quickness was okay. I think his speed is better than his quickness. It takes him time to get up to speed. Um, it's, his average is best. His burst is average. Um, he's got a pretty extensive injury history, most notably coming off the torn Achilles in 2021. Frankly. The fact that he played it as well as he did in 2022 coming off the torn Achilles makes you feel a little bit better about it. 
But I wouldn't be surprised if it moved him down some teams' draft boards, that injury history, that dur- those durability concerns, or some teams you know, made him a medical red flag and completely removed him from the board. Um, sometimes I will say, as much as he's got a feel for knowing his assignments of pass protection, he will get out of position. Like, he won't set his base. He will just get too far out in front and can get deeped pretty easily by the, the pass rusher. Um, also, his impact as a receiver is mostly a check down option guy. Now, you don't have to be a great route runner and a running back that you line up a ton in the slot or outside or move in motion and all over the damn place to be a guy that has three down ability at the NFL. You know, you can be like a check down out of the backfield, the flats, wheel routes type of guy. That's mostly what he is. He's mostly a check down option. At least he was at Minnesota. Um, Also, there's not much creativity or agility as a runner in the open field. It is mostly straight line with Ibrahim. It is basically, I'm coming at you, buckle up, bitches, here we go. And that's probably okay. Now, again, could lead to some concerns about how we would hold up at the NFL level long term. But, you know, we're talking about guys that you might be taking in day three of the draft, right? They're not going to be perfect. They're going to be prospects with fleas, if you will, all of them, regardless of the position. But I, I liked his game quite a bit. And when you're thinking about running backs that you take in day three that could fill some type of role and have a decent career in that role, I think of who I compare Ibrahim to. And it feels kind of a lazy comparison because it's another physical runner from Minnesota. Uh, but Marion Barber the third, You know, rest his soul. But... You look at Marion Barber, you know, during his time in Dallas, like this was a guy that had a clearly defined role, right? This was a guy that was your physical change of pace. He was a short yardage. He was a between the tackles guy. He was a goal line runner and he was a very effective, mind you, a very effective goal line runner. So you talk about Barber played, what, seven, eight, I think seven years in the league. You know, he had probably over 50-something career touchdown runs. Like that's a pretty good ratio in terms of a touchdown maybe every 20-ish runs or so. You know, something along those lines. You know, Ibrahim could have a similar type of role. And, you know, when you think back of Barber in his best years, he wasn't a dynamic player, but he certainly was a good one. Had a couple of close to 1,000-yard rushing seasons, so he could be a feature back. He was a little bit of a weapon in terms of, if nothing else, you throw it to him in the passing game as a check down option, and then he just comes down like a, a bowling ball of fuck you, um, and he'll run your ass over in the open field. If Ibrahim has a career similar to Marion Barber, then you could have done a whole hell of a lot worse with a fourth round pick. And that's kind of what I see for Ibrahim here, is some type of Marion Barber type role He could, for a few years, be a starter in the league and be a solid one and be a real red zone and goal line running threat. Um, He'll be the ultimate if you're in fantasy football. He'll be the type of running back you might stash late in a dynasty scenario or you use him as a late handcuff because you say, hey, he's going to get some of the goal line touches and I can pick up easy six points here and there. And you're probably right. Um, If he could stay healthy, he could outplay his draft position too. Worst case scenario, though, I think there is certainly a role and certainly a path to him being a success as a Marion-type, Barber-type of back at the NFL level. 